Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Birmingham. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are today, wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Today is a special day, Choir Sunday. To all who are with us this morning, welcome home. If you would like to participate or comment on our service, especially during our sharing of joys and sorrows, please use the chat feature in YouTube. If you're visiting our church this morning, please let us know you are here at bit.ly slash UUCB Connection. Please check out this morning's announcements. <laughs> prepares us for worship. This choral piece is a setting of the first two lines of Psalm 42. Sicut cervus desiderat ad fontes aquarum, ita desiderat anima mea a te Deus, which translates, as the heart longs for the water springs, so longs my soul for thee, O God. It's composed by Giovanni Pierluigi da Palestrina. He was an Italian Renaissance composer of sacred music and the best known 16th century representative of the Roman school of musical composition. He had a lasting influence on the development of church music and his work has often been seen as the culmination of Renaissance polyphony. Polyphony consists of two or more simultaneous lines of independent melody. And you'll note that as the choir sings, each voice sings a totally separate, different melody, which come together as one final voice on the final note.
Today's opening words are from American author Henry Van Dyke. Use what talents you possess. The woods would be very silent if no birds sang there, except those that sang the best. Our first breath is followed by our first song, Lusty, Loud, and Primal. A solo that announces to the world, I have arrived, we are the music. As toddlers hearing our first reggae beat, we let our spines and hips bend and sway in response, as natural as the beat of our hearts, we are the music. The drone of the bass notes of the church organ, a vibration in our chest, tense muscles relax, the breath deepens, we are the music. As we push the air from our bellies out through the chest and throat, our changing expressions shape the sound. We are the music. As we sing together, voices blend to create a harmony, each voice enriched by its connection to the next. We are the music. Our reading this morning is from Danish author Carl Nielsen from his book, entitled Living Music. If music were to assume human form and explain life's essence, it might say something like this. I am everywhere and nowhere. I skim the wave and the tops of forests. I sit in the throat of the savage and at the foot of a human and sleep in the stone and the sounding metal. None can grasp me, all can apprehend me. I live tenfold more intensely than any living thing and die a thousandfold deeper. I love the vast surface of silence and it is my chief delight to break it. I know no sorrow or joy, no pleasure or pain, but I can rejoice weep, laugh, and lament all at once and everlastingly. Now let's join in our hymn together, Come Sing a Song with Me. Church is supported by those who call our church home. 
and by those who support the efforts of our church to change the world for the better. We share our cash plate every Sunday with organizations whose work reflects UU values to care for marginalized persons, advocate for real and systemic change, defend our environment, and promote justice and equity for all. This month's Share the Plate recipient is Be a Blessing Birmingham, an outreach to our homeless neighbors in downtown Birmingham. Be a Blessing provides clothing, food, and other amenities to our houseless neighbors and recently purchased a portable shower. During this time of social distancing and online worship, please know that our church expenses continue. Therefore, we very much appreciate your continuing to pay your pledge or offer your donation either by mailing a check to the church office or by using PayPal or Venmo. Our Venmo account is at UUC B-H-A-M. Please designate whether your offering is for UUCB or Be a Blessing Birmingham. Thank you for your generous support of our church and our Share the Plate recipient. May we give in love and in hope. Our next song, Oh Love, is a recording that we uh, put together last year during the pandemic. We used it uh, December 20th, 2020, and just we used it again two months later for our Valentine's Day service. The composer Elaine Hagenberg is highly admired by our choir director, Jim, and she's also a friend of his. And she's a 2002 graduate of Drake University at Des Moines, Iowa. The state of Iowa, especially Des Moines, is a very flourishing choral scene. 20% of all households have a very active choir member. Hockenberg's exposure to this environment is likely what makes us admire this piece.
we share is sacred by Andre Moll. As we gather together, may we remember when you share with me what is most important to you, that is where our listening begins. When I show you that I hear you, when I say your life matters, that is where compassion begins. When I open the door to greet you, that is where hospitality begins. When I venture out to bring you to shelter, that is where love begins. When I risk my comfort to ease your suffering, when I act against hatred, violence, and injustice, that is where courage begins. When we, when we experience the full presence of each other, because of our shared humanity, because of our differences, that is where our holy gratitude begins. May this space be a table that is not complete until all are welcome. May this table be a space of beauty where together we create a series of miracles and where all that we share is sacred. May it be so. The music you'll hear next is by the contemporary American composer Stefan Walliger with words based on the writings of a medieval mystic known as Julian of Norwich. After having a series of visions during a near-death experience, she devoted the rest of her life to contemplation, living in a single room appended to St. Julian's Church in Norwich, England. One window let her observe Mass, and another allowed her to speak to people who came to seek her counsel. Julian lived in a time of great suffering, experiencing constant war and bouts of plague which, at its peak, took three-fourths of the people of her city. Many view the plague as a punishment from God, but her visions taught Julian that her God was a God of love, hope, and compassion. And she shared her message in a work entitled Revelations of Divine Love, considered to be the first English-language book by a female author. Written by a woman in a self-imposed lockdown, her words offer comfort during our own pandemic. Her joyful message was also a fitting tribute to the life of UUCB member David Baker. And we are grateful to Kimberly Kirkland for singing the lovely descant that makes this piece come to life. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh.
children of all ages get real comfortable so we can think together for a few minutes about gifts. Each of you is a gift. I hope you already know that, but I hope you like to be reminded again. You are a gift because there's no one else just like you, because you have thoughts and dreams and friends in ways that nobody else really does. You are unique. When you share yourself, you share your gift. I want you to think of yourself for a minute, kind of like this bag. It's not a gift, but it's a gift bag. You see the, the duck here, sunglasses on. You are like this gift bag because you have many gifts inside of you. There are lots of things inside that people can see, like bones and, as my brother used to say, blood and guts. But there are also hidden things. Let's think about those for a minute. Here's a bag of candy, and it reminds me of people who are sweet. You might be one of the people that really likes to to be with other people and help them feel good. You might be one of these people that others realize they are really kind. They help me feel good when I'm not feeling good. Another gift you might have is the gift to like to read. I had a friend when I was in, in elementary school who really liked to read and I didn't. I'd much rather be outside playing uh, you might, oh, you might get a gift sometimes that at first you don't like it. When I was six years old, I was given this little book, looking inside. I knew I couldn't read, and no, none of my classmates could read print this tiny either. But as I looked at it, I realized that my teacher had written on it with love to lie to hell. She had written it in the way that big folks, grown-ups, write. And I like that, but you know what? She taught me the most important thing was that church is a good place to be. And that I enjoyed Sunday school because of that teacher. So this little book has always been with me wherever I've moved in these many years since the first grade. But this at first was a gift I didn't like. And you may have a gift that at first you don't like it. And then there are gifts like this we, can't, we don't know what they are. Now, as I've gotten older, I found I like to read. So that's a gift that was hidden. Now, there's one more thing down here. I wonder if you've seen one of these before. I found that's got some sounds that maybe are not already in there, but I can work at it. Well, some gifts just take a lot of work to make them so that we can really enjoy them. Try again. Oh my goodness, woo! Well, it's got sound. Between me and this, this little kazoo, we can make a sound together. find an instrument that you like to play and if you like to play I hope you'll play and play and play a lot better than I can play I found a gift within me is singing oh I love to sing and I have loved singing in the UUCB choir in this choir every voice is important every person is appreciated a presence is valuable. Each one of us adds to the choir. You know, we have very gifted leaders, but they work hard at what they're doing. They do a lot of homework. Maybe you can tell, but I know for sure they do. Another gifted, uh, another gift that you have you may be sitting here thinking, 
Well, I enjoy being, I enjoy listening. And that is a gift. When you listen to the choir and you communicate because you're really listening, then that's a gift. It's a gift to the choir and it's a gift to the church. And your gift is very appreciated. You are appreciated. And I am very thankful for having been able to be a part of this choir for three and a half years. Even though it was a little while, I'll always be thankful for having been here because this choir, this congregation, you're both a gift. Our next piece of music was written by Ola Yello, a Norwegian composer who now makes his home in New York City. Ola learned to read and compose music and began playing the piano before he was seven years old. The choir has performed several of his compositions over the years. The ground is our favorite so far. Ola is only 43 years young. You Are the New Day was one of the first songs that I learned when I joined the choir. It's still one of my favorites. This introduction to the song was taken from an issue of the Choir Loft from 2011. You Are the New Day was composed by multi-talented Welsh rock musician John David. 
however spiritually moving the listener might find the music, You Are the New Day is described as a secular song. David wrote it for Airwaves in 1978 during a time when personal difficulties and and threats to world peace caused him to look for hope within himself. In John David's own words, the inspiration for New Day was quite simple. I had just had a major blow in my personal life and was sitting alone late at night on the settee feeling very low and watching an ominous story on the news about the very real possibility of nuclear war. I started singing to the hopefully soon to arrive new day like it was an entity that would rescue me from the depths. If the sun came up and the birds started singing as usual, then I could believe that it really was the new day in which life would go on and in which hope would survive. Hi, I'm James Wilson. Some of you may not know me since I joined the church and the choir during the pandemic. I haven't met a lot of people here at church, but those I have met through Zoom have become very dear to me. My mama told me that I would always find great friends at church, and especially in the choir. I think she was right. She always was. This church and choir are full of like-minded people who truly care for each other, with a lack of judgment, with compassion abundant, and with love overflowing. That's what I have found in the choir. I have felt nothing but love and compassion, with no judgment. Being a new kid in the choir, I wondered how I was going to fit in with this group of people. They embraced me and have treated me as if I've always been there. And I have made some great friends along the way. I hope you have found your great friends here at church and in the choir. And as the great Amy Poehler once said, 
Find a group of people who challenge and inspire you. Spend a lot of time with them, and they will change your life. Blessed be. Please join us in our closing hymn. Music in the air, music all around us. The world is full of it, and you simply take as much as you require. And as we complete this service of music, I would like to leave us all with the following words from the Reverend Maureen Kaloran. As we listen to the blessing of music, may we know this ending as more than a time of goodbye. May the warmth of this community and the memory of our chalice flame sustain our hearts and encourage our minds as we engage the blessings of life's challenges and joys. The service has ended. Your service has begun. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love. Good morning, my name is James Sullivan and I'm the choir director here at UUCB. At this point in the service, I would usually take the opportunity to speak to you a little bit about choral singing and about what it means to sing in a choir. All of us in the choir deeply feel the need to share with the congregation the benefits and joy we get out of singing together. We want to share our experiences with you, hoping that you can feel what we feel, as well as to entice you to join us if you ever have the desire. However, today, if you don't mind, just this once, I'd like to take a slightly different angle. Instead of speaking for the choir, I would actually like to speak to the choir. I think you'll agree that they deserve a few words after all they've been through this past year. This was a difficult year for the choir to say the least. I don't wanna say that we suffered more than any other group in the church, but I do know that we suffered. Because of the nature of what we do, we depend on our physical bodies resonating together, making our sound, and the fact that we haven't been able to be together has been very difficult this year. I thought a lot about what I wanted to say to the choir today, and I kept coming back to the same words, the same two words, which you may have already guessed, thank you. Thank you, choir. That pretty much sums it up. I could probably stop there. But in continuing to think about it, I had several more words that popped into my mind and just flooded, flooded me all of a sudden, and I think I'd like to share those with you now. 
I knew these words already, of course. They're not complicated words, but I have to say my definition this year of the words has changed because of the choir. Faithfulness. We have had a Zoom choir rehearsal every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. during the whole pandemic. These dedicated folks actually showed up every week. There are a few that never missed, which I think is amazing. Um, we tried several different approaches. We had mini concerts where I would get friends from the symphony to, to play for a few minutes for the choir members. We had music theory lessons. We listened to different recordings of ourselves in the past and other choirs. We had critiques. I, I would send music in the mail that we would study on Tuesday, discuss it on Wednesday. Basically, we tried everything. And through all of this, the choir was faithful. They showed up every week. Patience. This is the word I thought of when I thought of how the choir dealt with me personally. Patience describes what they needed to deal with me this year. I am not a very techie person, as all of you know, and or may know. Um, I've taken pride in the past in not knowing all the technical things that go into music editing and, and, and things like that. So as you know, the only way we could sing together this year is to present virtual choir projects. So at this point, I have to give a huge thank you to Courtney Johnson and Erica Howard. To say that they spent countless hours with me this past year is the biggest understatement. Erica will be the first to tell you that she probably thought it would be easy to teach me how to get through a computer program, but what she really had to teach me was how to turn the computer on. That was our starting point. I, I thought I knew a little more than I did, but I knew nothing. So thank you a million times, Erica and Courtney, and for the whole choir for being patient with me. Perseverance. Through the making of these virtual choir projects, the choir has to record themselves individually. That's a whole different concept than singing in a choir. When you're singing in a choir, you're surrounded by all of your, all of your friends and loved ones who are making the sound and you're joining in. For a virtual choir project, you record yourself. And the part that makes it so bad is that they know they're sending the recording to me and that I'm going to listen to them by themselves as I'm putting all the voices together. What's amazing is that there have been several, I would say all members of the choir that actually made progress during this crazy time from getting feedback from me if they asked for it or just listening to themselves as they made these, these recordings, they grew and they improved vocally and it's been heartwarming for me personally. Resilience. Resilience means the ability to bounce back. And I saw that clearly as we were working on the anthem Siku Cherbus, which is one of the choir's favorite pieces. They were very frustrated and disappointed with their own personal recordings of that piece. But as soon as they heard the finished product, after I had had a, a few days to put all the voices together and show them what it actually sounded like as a, as a unit, they were ready to jump right back in. They were, they bounced right back, just as the word resilience um, describes. So resilience described is the epitome of what this choir has been this past year through all of the challenges we've faced. Compassion. Compassion is what the choir members showed each other every single week at choir rehearsal. When one of the members was struggling, all the others rallied around that person and built them up week after week after week. They were a constant source of strength for each other as well as to me, for sure. Kindness. Every single member of this choir is kind, but I have to say when I thought of the word kindness, one member popped out and that's Deborah Burrell. Deborah is the music committee chairperson and she is the person that helps me constantly. When I say she helps me every day, there's no exaggeration at all. 
Deborah puts in countless hours every week to keep the choir machine running smoothly. I wouldn't get half as much done without Deborah. And I just want to take a minute to thank Deborah from the bottom of my heart for all that she does. Joy is what we experienced just a couple of weeks ago when we finally were able to meet outside the church in person and we sang those first few notes. That was joy. And I hope we have much more of that in the months and years to come. Love is the last word and I saved that one for last. Love is what this incredible group makes me feel on a, on a daily basis. They insist on that. And I feel like I'm able to love more deeply because of all that I've learned from this choir. When I came to UUCB, I saw myself as a choir director and I thought I was pretty good at taking a group of people and making them sound better as a whole than they, than they did individually. And I thought that was the job of the choir director. But now I know that it's all about loving each other. And when that is the bottom line, then the performances take on another whole level of meaning as well as quality. Um, finally, one huge thank you goes to Reverend Julie. She has been a rock to me personally this year and she has helped me through many situations um, just personally and getting me ready to be with the choir and we, I can't thank her enough. I'm so glad she's driving the ship. I don't see how you do it, Reverend Julie, and my hat's off to you. Finally, um, we captured our joy a couple of weeks ago when we sang together, and the first piece that we sang is the next one on the program today, Dona Nobis Pachem, which means bring us peace. It was a little windy that night. I think it was Mother Nature trying to chime in and, and give her two cents worth. So please pardon the extra wind or enjoy it as the case may be. And we just hope that you feel the same joy and love as you listen as we felt when we recorded it. Thank you so much.